Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Pass the FE exam video. Now in this episode, we're going to dive into everything that you need to know to ace the fundamentals of engineering exam. I'm your host, Matthew Douglas, and I'm joined today by Mauricio Bernal, returning intern at Burns & McDonald, who will also be facilitating this discussion with Katie Lev, an engineer in training and an assistant structural engineer at Burns & McDonald. From exam format high insights to personal study strategies and exam daily tips, this episode is a must watch for aspiring engineers looking to pass the FE exam with flying colors. But before we get started, here's a quick word from our sponsor for this episode, Burns & McDonald. Career at Burns & McDonald goes beyond delivering projects. It's about owning outcomes, finding your best fit, and making a difference. Right now, Burns & McDonald is hiring engineers, architects, construction professionals, technologists, scientists, and consultants to design, build, and deliver environmentally conscious and socially responsible projects. Explore opportunities across their family of companies by visiting burnsmcd.com careers. Burns and McDonald is an equal opportunity employer. All right, and with that, let's get started. Mauricio, over to you for the first question. Katie, can you start by telling us more about yourself and what made you decide to take the FE exam? Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Katie Love. I graduated from Northwestern University with a combined bachelor's and master's in civil and structural engineering, respectively. It was a five-year program, but due to all, I went to school in COVID, I overloaded on classes, I was able to cram it in and took some APs in college or in high school, mind you. And um, I was able to graduate with both degrees at once in four years. I also pursued a um, minor in environmental policy and culture, which really plays into my job now as well. And the reason I really took the FE exam, I think mainly we had a lot of um, inspiration from our university to go take it prior to graduation because it's an exam that costs money and we were um, financially reimbursed back if we took the exam prior to the end of college. And I was on a career trajectory in that the FE would parlay into taking the PE, which I ultimately wanted to get to be able to stamp design drawings. Awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned that your university really uh, helped you out and kind of encouraged you to take the FE while you were still in undergrad. So my next question for you is for someone looking to take the FE exam, when would you recommend they schedule their test date? Is there kind of an ideal time of the year or a point in someone's academic slash professional uh, journey to take the exam? And how far in advance did you schedule the exam date? That's a really great question overall. I took, they also, on top of being um, financially reimbursed for the exam, students at Northwestern were able to take a prep course, which we took during the winter of our senior year with anticipation of taking the exam end of winter, springtime prior to graduation, again, for that stipend. I know people who took it, I mean, obviously after graduation, towards the end of summer, but after that senior fall when you've had mainly a lot of your design courses out of the way, hoping that maybe I went to a quarter school, so two quarters worth or just your spring semester classes, you would be able to use that on the exam, but you don't need to necessarily finish those classes to be able to take the exam. Uh, you don't need to know every single topic on the FE exam. There's so many of them. So just having enough of that coursework under your belt, you're, they're very much under the assumption that by the, like when you're about to graduate, you've had most of those design courses or courses relevant to the FE completed. And in terms of scheduling in advance, I think I just kind of set my mind to a date and studied for that date. I took it um, at the end of March or end of March or end of, yeah, I think end of March of my senior year. And I booked that kind of in the beginning of when I took that prep course. So in, in January, I started studying for it. And then with, in, with that in mind, had the flexibility to study over a couple of months while doing that prep class to then take the exam in March. 
But in terms of just availability, there are so many different testing schedule, um, centers out there. So it really depends on where you live, how far in advance you need to schedule it. For me, it was more of a point of, now I, I'm signed up, I'm taking it, no backing out now. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you for that. So I know we we're jumping in a bit into all the different sections and uh, subjects that are within the FE exam. So uh, if you could just tell me a little bit more about what the format of the exam is like, is it mostly multiple choice questions? Are there some short answer questions, fill in the blank questions, or just what are the different kinds? For sure. In total, it's always 110 questions, and it's split into two different parts. You have a first part, then a break, then a second part, and then you're completed. That's just because it would be very hard to answer 110 questions all in a row, no breaks, no nothing. Um, they're mainly multiple choice. However, there are some kind of what they call alternative questions, which is multiple correct options. You have a graph you have to click on a point. That's the correct point for whatever you're analyzing and it's something where you have to drag and drop something or just small fill in the blank questions for numerical answers. Okay, awesome. Circling back around to just our conversation about studying and getting ready for taking the exam. Uh, with the timeline that you were provided, were you able to map out a comprehensive study schedule? If so, could you share the details on how you organize your study sessions and the specific goals that you set for each period? For sure, that's a really great question. Again, very much formatted by how I was um, Initially, it was formatted by that design, that course that I took to prepare for the FE through Northwestern. However, they're moving um, a little too slowly for my timeline, being that the end of the class would have been after when I was planning on taking the FE. So I mainly, I took the courses, the topics on the FE that I took the courses in and made those study sessions shorter relative to maybe reading a little bit more on the things that I didn't know so much about. Not saying that I was teaching myself a lot of information, but um, you have a booklet that you're given during the FE, which you are like you can look at prior to the FE. It just has reference equations, examples. So I spent more time familiarizing myself with that booklet, especially in the topics I didn't know so well, just so I was aware of certain terms. If it came up in a question, then I would know where to search in the booklet. Um, however, for certain topics that I was more familiar with, it was easy for me to go through that booklet and find exactly what kind of, um, how I would basically answer those questions, right? If I was analyzing a trust, I, I tutored statics. I knew so much about trusses. So maybe I just needed one or two pieces of information versus I didn't really take a very formal transportation class. Mine was more in urban planning. So those transportation questions about how long a green light should be, I didn't know so much about. So I just studied those terms that were relevant for those and looked through the booklet. And that's how I really formatted my study sessions. Um, definitely not too overwhelming. Um, the longest time I'd ever be in concentration at one point was if I was taking a practice exam. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's great that you weren't too stressed out and for structuring your study sessions to where you wouldn't get overwhelmed. And so how did you manage your time and uh, how did you prepare for your exam alongside any other commitments in school and all that? I thought of it kind of like a like a club I was in for a quarter. Just uh, in for certain clubs, you're more or less involved week to week. So if I found myself you know, during midterms, obviously it's not a class that I was prioritizing. It's the zero credit class, right? You're just taking the exam. So in those weeks, I would study less. But say in the beginning of the quarter, and in waves when I didn't have as much work, I was able to dedicate more time. Um, overall. So be, I ensured that my workload in terms of classes was more stagnant rather than the typical kind of roller coaster you experience during a typical quarter or semester. Awesome. That's great. And during the actual exam, what strategies did you use to make sure that you were able to answer all the questions within the given time? I think a matter, I think the question should more be, what did I do to prepare to do that? Because when you're in the exam, I know I'm sure you took the SAT or the ACT, you go into those long-term 
exams or even finals or midterms and you leave being like, what did I just do? I have no idea what just went on. And the whole point to that saying that is that in advance, you want to make sure that maybe you have a timer on hand or you set out time. It's an average of answering a question in three minutes, like three minutes per question, if you want to finish on time. And mind you, that sounds like zero time, but there are some questions out there that are like easy, done, go to the next. Um, so I would say a good point is to, if you're not doing an entire practice exam at once, which I would not recommend doing every time you do a practice exam, maybe it's just 20 questions. You have 20 questions, three minutes per question. So sit down for an hour and make sure you can get all of them done. I think that's a really good point to have. And as you build up confidence, those, that three minutes, you'll, you'll be done before those 20 questions will be done before the hour. And there at the exam, you will start getting some momentum on there and you'll be able to answer those questions just on time. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for all those tips. And lastly, based on your personal experience, what final piece of advice can you give to aspiring engineers who are preparing to take the FE exam for the first time? That is a really, really great question. I would say that it's very important to leave doors open. Um, maybe you don't know what you're going to do after college, and that's okay. <laughs> Most people don't. I, I sure did it, and I'm a year into my career, and I still don't know where I'm going to be in five years. Um, but I'm really glad that I took the FE just because then I leave that door open and I'm able to either stay in this design path that I intended on wanting to go into when I was a senior in college, or maybe not, and that's okay, but you still have it under your belt and you can, it doesn't go bad. You can always go and continue your education. If I want to pee 10 years down the line, I can still do it because I took the FE. The further away you take the FE from school, you realize it's harder to study like a college student when you're not in college. So I know studying for the PE, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Be a few years out of school, um, I'm not in that study mindset anymore. But because I'm, in, I was a senior in a study mindset, taking courses, it just felt so right to just add something else academic in there, um, and be so used to you know, doing pra practice exams and whatnot. Uh, so. First, anyone who is unsure of taking the exam, there unless there's, you know, try to make sure that you can uh, get some kind of financial reimbursement if you can. Maybe talk to your school. Talk if you had an internship, maybe they can help you out. Uh, but it's very uh, otherwise, you know, that's something maybe you talk to with the organization that runs the FE. But on the other side. If you take it, then it opens so many more doors than closing every single door by not taking it. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank you so much for that wonderful <laughs> advice. Um, it's so great to hear from someone who's recently just taken the FE as I'm preparing to take the, the FE as well. So I really appreciate your time and all the advice that you've given me. So um, I'm looking to taking the exam. Good, I'm glad. So I hope that you all have found this week's video very helpful. And in upcoming videos, we're going to answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button on the screen as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problems and solutions. Uh, we're going to give them out weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And I encourage you all to ask questions in the comments that we'll read and we'll respond to in future videos. So if there's a specific topic that you want us to cover, or a question that you want answered, pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you guys next week.